Continuing with the second method for proving that triangles are congruent, this one is called side, angle, side. And the order of the letters is very important. That means a side, the included angle, and then the next side. If a side is congruent to the side of two triangles is congruent, the included angle is congruent, and the next side is congruent, then the triangles are congruent using side, angle, side. So if we look at these two triangles here, here I have my two centimeter triangle uh, side length and my two centimeter side length. And as I go around my triangle here, I have my 54 degree angle. And from my two centimeter triangle, I find my 54 degree angle. And then I have my three centimeter side. I have my three centimeter side. I would say that these two triangles are congruent and the reason would be side, angle, side. As you go around the triangle, side, included angle, and side are all congruent. So we've got side, 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 and side, angle, side. So if two sides and an included angle of one triangle are congruent with two sides and the included angle of the second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. And the reason would be side, angle, side, and the order of the letters is very important. <clears throat> now sometimes, depending on the diagram, triangles might actually share an angle or triangles might actually share a side. And so if I have one triangle and they're using this side and I have another triangle using the same side, let's say this is side AB or segment AB, that's one side of this triangle, it's also a side of this triangle. I would want to say that segment AB is congruent with itself. That's identity. Identity means that, you know, something is congruent with itself. You also might hear it called reflexive, the reflexive property of congruence. But you would want to explicitly state that because AB is considered a side of a triangle and is considered the side of the other triangle. So you want to at least have this statement so that you could know explicitly that that side is congruent in both triangles. So depending on the diagram that you have, sometimes you'll have overlapping diagrams, overlapping triangles. I will often redraw the diagram just because it's clearer to me. Um, but when overlapping triangles are proven congruent, it's common to cite identity as the reason why a side or an angle is congruent to itself, the identity property. And you'll see what we mean here. All right, so here I have <clears throat> that segment PN is perpendicular to MQ. All right, I'm actually going to draw this as two different triangles. I'm going to break this diagram apart. And this is PN, and that's also PN in my second triangle. Here's vertex M, here's vertex Q. And I have been told that PN and MQ are perpendicular. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that. That's a 90 degree angle and that's a 90 degree angle because that's what happens with perpendicular lines. I'm also told in my given that segment MN is congruent with segment NQ. <clears throat> and we want to tr uh, prove these two triangles, P and M and P and Q, we want to prove these two triangles congruent. Well, I have side, angle, 
But you know what? I have to show that this side is congruent with this side. Now we know it's the same side. We know it's the segment PN. But we would want to say that PN, segment PN, is congruent with PN. And why can we say that? We can say that because of the identity property. Something is always congruent with itself. We would want to say angle, now we don't want to just say angle N, we would say angle PNM is congruent with angle PNQ. And why is that? Perpendicular lines create 90 degree angles or two congruent angles. That's what perpendicular lines do. And then the last statement is that segment MN is congruent with segment NQ. And why can we say that? That was given. So here's a side. Here's the included angle, and here's a side. We can say that triangle PNM is congruent with triangle PNQ, and our reason would be side, included angle, and side. And uh, this is the reminder here that even though we know PN is used in both triangles, you want to say that the, that side is congruent because it is used in two triangles. So we have side, 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 and side, angle, side. The next reason <clears throat> is angle, side, angle. Two consecutive angles and the included side across two triangles if we have congruent angle, congruent side, and then going around the triangle, congruent angle, that's 33 and that's 33. We would say these two, these two triangles are congruent because of angle, side, angle. So that's postulate 14 of two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent and the reason is angle, side, angle. And here's your reminder that it's very important that you list the vertices and uh, in the correct order as you go around the triangle. So what's the difference here? Angle, side, angle, the side is between two angles. Side, angle, side, the angle is between two sides. It just, just depends on what information you're given. This has two angles and the included side. This has, uh, the other one has two sides and the included angle. And then, of course, we also have side, side, side. If all three sides are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. So we have side, 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 angle, side, and angle, side, angle. OK, now, what is not a good way to prove triangles are congruent? Side, side, angle is not a method for proving angles, triangles are congruent. Two sides and then an angle that follows the sides might actually lead to two totally different triangles. Let's take a look. So if we have two centimeters and two centimeters, they're congruent. And we have five centimeters and five centimeters. They're congruent. And here's a 20 degree angle. 
that would be side, side, angle. But you know what? These sides are not congruent. This one might be 3, and this one might be 4 and a half. So you cannot use just any combinations of sides and angles, any three. It's got to be side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle for what we've learned so far. Another method that is not a good way to prove that triangles are congruent is angle, side, uh, I'm sorry, angle, angle, angle. If all three angles are congruent, this is not a good way to prove that triangles are congruent. Because look here, I have two triangles here. Those two angles are congruent, those two angles are congruent, and those two angles are congruent. They are obviously the same shape, but they are not the same size. They're not the same size. Their side lengths are different. So you don't want to use just angle, 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 or just any combination of sides and angles for three. You've got to use only the use only the rules that we've been given. <clears throat>